Hey folks, time for another one. I uh, figure I'm going to try and keep it a little short today. I'm going to cover a project that I've been trying to get done for a long time and that I'm sure probably will never actually get done. That is building a computer. And no, I don't mean putting some parts in a case from Newegg. I mean, I would say a single board computer, but my computer isn't single board. It's several boards. Well, it's at least two boards when you put it together. But, you know, that gives you the idea of what we're going for, I think. But I've been working on this for, good lord, I wanted to build one since I was a kid, you know, like little kid, uh, ever since I got interested in computers. Because that's part of the thing, you know, is it's such a, you want to know how it all works and you want to you wanna boil away all the abstractions and just figure out what's even really going on in there. I really started in earnest when I was like in my, in my mid-ish 20s. There were some stops and starts and stops and starts. And finally, the latest iteration, I started maybe three years ago, maybe a little more. I, I think it's kind of fun. It's it's in a real janky state because it's one of those things that you work on it a little bit and then you put it away and then you take it out. And you know, we just went through a move, so it's gotten manhandled and whatnot and uh, it's amazing it works at all. I did check. But you know, it's in an in-between working state. So uh, I'll just give it a rundown because I think it's interesting. Maybe someday I'll keep working on it. Maybe I'll never work on it again. But uh, yeah, worth showing, I think. So let's give it a look. So let's see if we can do this uh, by natural light, for I have built another bench against the other wall. I think this works out pretty okay. So here is my work, my hacky hacky work. I think the most fun, well, there are like two things that are fun about this to me. One is the CPU. This guy is a 65816 which is kind of the big brother of the 6502. The 6502 was 8-bit, um, had 16 bits of address space and an 8-bit data bus. This is the 16-bit-ish upgrade path from that. It was used in the Super Nintendo. It was used in the Apple II GS. In both those cases, it was because they were iterations on consoles, computers, you know, that had already existed and already used a 6502. Uh, you know, the NES and the Apple II series. So this was an upgrade path for that to allow, one of the big things is 24-bit addressing without having to do bank switching. It kind of does bank switching internally in a, in a funky way and provides 16 extra bits, or uh, eight extra bits at the top end of the address space. Um, that is addressed a little weird, but you know, makes it more or less native to the CPU and obviously much faster than doing actual bank switching. But the data bus is still actually only eight bits wide. It's interesting because that extra eight bits of address gets multiplexed onto the data bus during the first part of a bus cycle. So it's a clever hack, which is fun. But you know, to call this really a 16 bit processor is, eh, it's, it's pushing it. Um, but still, it's cool to me to think, you know, what could have been that if the uh, 6502 systems had been more popular than the PC, which is funny because the PC was really the only major user of the uh, 8080, um, whereas there were many, many machines that were using the 6502. Anyway, that maybe we could be using, you know, 65X series machines right now instead of x86 machines. And that's one of the reasons I find this processor interesting. And I kind of just wanted to build a machine that had an interesting processor in it. You know, there's a million Z80 ones out there, and there are a million 6502 ones out there. I originally wanted to uh, do this with a 68K, and uh, I'll get back to that actually in a minute. I had some dip 68Ks and lost one and blew the other up. So after that, I had to find an alternative because I just couldn't find dip 60 or dip 68K chips anymore. So that's cool. Um, this is also fun. I mean, probably only fun to me, but this is, um, I don't quite know the vintage because I'm not that much of a researcher on this stuff, but this is a Lattice CPLD that I got off eBay, which I found from this particular project, getting NOS parts off of eBay. I mean, it's, it's shady, you better look out, but uh, it can get you some cool stuff like out-of-date CPLDs that are hard to use. But I find this cool because, you know, it's not a modern FPGA, which I, I would feel like is kind of cheating. I realize that's just me, but you know, if I want to build a single board computer, the most hardcore way to do it is to do all your logic in, uh, you know, 74 series logic completely discreetly. Or the other end of the spectrum is use an FPGA and just have way more horsepower than you could ever possibly need. To me, this is, you know, because it's kind of contemporaneous with the 65816, because I think this is like early 90s tech, so it's a, you know, 
it's it's a bit too new for this, but it's fun because it's still a little bit limiting and it was a bit of a project to build uh, an SPI programmer for this because there are schematics to build uh, cables that are compatible with the Lattice programmer and work with the Lattice software. And then that's a whole thing because you have to get the old Lattice uh, HDL software that supports programming these chips at all. The other fun thing is with that software, it has, uh, I think it has VHDL support, but I don't know if the license is broken or what. I cannot get it to work. So I have to I have to write for this thing in a language called Able, which some people may know. And it's fascinating, and nobody knows what the hell Able is anymore. But it's a hardware description language, and uh, it exists. And it's the only thing that I can write stuff for this in. So this does all the glue logic, which isn't saying much. And ultimately what it's gluing together is just uh, 32K of RAM, 32K of ROM. I have that backwards, 32K of ROM, 32K of RAM. And those take up the low 64K of the memory area. So as is traditional with 6502 machines, um, this ROM is in the high area. It's the boot up firmware. You know, it's basically the, the BIOS, but I just kind of have a monitor program in there. Then the low part of memory uh, so that you can put the stack and more critically for 6502 stuff the zero page values at uh, the low area in memory. And that, that's that. There's a couple switches here for uh, kind of selecting banks of this chip because this is, I guess it would have to be a 128K chip because I'm selecting before, between four possible configurations that I can burn to it, but I've never used that. Um, as you can see, there is also a slot here. This is more or less just the CPU lines busted out to a card slot so that I can make hardware uh, that works with this and play around with extra stuff while not having to solder it directly onto the board. And those 24 bits of address are busted out via this onto that slot just to make life a little easier. And then finally over here, again, more uh, eBay parts. The, the thing that was fun for me is that there's a lot of PLCC stuff from the early 90s. And PLCC is great if you want to do like Vero board construction like this, if this is how you like, uh, um, you know, building your prototype PCBs, then it's great because you can go through hole and uh, also get high pin count parts, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. But anyway, this is just a serial communication section. This is a uh, XR, I don't know much about the chip, um, except that I looked up the data sheet and figured out how to program it. But it's just like a two, it's either a two or four uh, unit UART um, in a PLCC package. And then you just got the uh, baud clock for that. Uh, and then a level converter section just with a max 232. And finally the... Uh, output. And then clearly the, the world's jankiest power input, which this is actually even an upgrade before I used to just have a USB cable soldered to this. I'm going to show you the backside because this is the fun part because I did everything point to point with Kynar wire. And oh my god, I'm amazed that this works at all. Again, after three years of bumping around and it is, it's something. I think it's kind of pretty, honestly, but um, trying to get in there with a soldering iron when you need to add or remove lines is just, it's amazing. So that's that. Uh, in a minute, I will give a quick demo. Um, again, it's not in a super working state. This main board works okay, but it doesn't really do much to show, or at least the onboard firmware uh, isn't much to see. Because um, mostly when I was playing with this, I wrote the firmware so that I can upload programs to it over serial. And I don't have any of those convenient right now, so I can basically just show you the monitor. But Hopefully you'll get the idea. Now I have a couple other things here. First is um, the most workingest card I ever built for it. This is my video card because I wanted to, you know, build GUI stuff. Crazy simple. It's just another one of those CPLDs because I'm a cheater cheater. And then some fairly fast, uh, I don't even know how much RAM this is anymore. And that's it. There's a kind of a resistor DAC thing over here. Uh, this outputs what is functionally uh, CGA. The format and memory, at least how this is configured right now, is uh, four BPP, um, but not mapped, it's direct. So each nibble that's coming out of this RAM chip uh, is going basically through here, getting selected, whether it's the high or the low, and then getting put straight into this DAC and then straight out there. So you get, you know, 16 colors. I checked and tried earlier, this card, I mean, it kind of works, I'll power it up, but I was futzing around with various different ways of like latching stuff in and whatnot. So uh, in my testing earlier, this card, uh, I'm not sure, how I had it set up and I can't get it to actually display proper video from the CPU, but I can power it up and show you the uh, nonsense that's in RAM and show you that it's generating video, if nothing else. And then this is just a pile of garbage. I mean, there's really almost no reason to, to show you this. And this is just a 68,000 in a PGA package, 
which I figured, hey, if I can do those PLCCs, it's basically the same thing on the back. And, uh, you know, it is. Uh, I just have an addiction. So someday I might get that wired up and build a machine around it. But, I mean, someday I might finish this machine. Who knows what'll happen first. All right, back over to the other bench that I freed up some space in. So I will get this plugged in and I will pull uh, the do everything power supply over here. And I'll just power this up and show y'all what the, what the monitor's like. It's basically a monitor. Okay, so hopefully you can see that a little bit. I think I got that pretty okay. <laughs> you can see all this garbage up here. You know, there's a kind of a slow rise on the power lines as it turns on. It doesn't run the reset circuit that I wrote into that CPLD uh, properly. So I kind of have to bounce the power line several times to get it to restart properly. So what you see here is it's showing the current address. Right now it's at 500, which I kind of ad hoc decide is just like, that's my, I can write stuff to their space of memory. Uh, but, you know, this is really just for reading and writing stuff into and out of RAM. So, for example, the command exam, that'll dump the current byte uh, at that address and then increment the address by one. Even better than that, I added the command load. If you type in digits in hex all day, it'll just write those consecutively into memory. I can set the address, ADDR, I believe, and then you have to put in a full 24-bit address, so let's go back to 500, 00, 0500, and we're back at 500. I can dump memory, too, um, so if I hit dump, and then I believe it's a full 24-bit, so if I do 00, 00, 00, and let's dump 16, yeah, so it'll dump 16 consecutive bytes from RAM, and then, you know, increment up to 16 bytes after that one. Um, so we can do a quick test of the load command, I guess. ADDR 0005 00. And now let's do a load. And we can see, because we, uh, we dumped 500 to 510, and that's this garbage, just complete random garbage. Um, let's do load. And obviously, this is meant for connecting this to another computer and sending basically, like, hex dumps into RAM of stuff that, like, I can assemble... Uh, compile whatever on a PC or another machine, and then load them over serial a little bit faster, uh, which has been useful. But I don't know where any of those are right now, and I don't feel like futzing with it. So uh, I'll just I'll just zero out RAM, and I'll just hold down some zeros. Okay, it's good enough. And now if we ADDR back to 00500, and dump another 16, zero, 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 zero. One zero. No, that's an error. Zero zero. Zero zero. One zero. Should probably put in a command name, huh? Dump. Zero zero. Zero zero. One zero. Go. Okay, you can see I, I zeroed everything out. So I hope that was real exciting. Hey there. Let's work on one more thing, which is just firing up this guy. Like I said, I can't really show you much, but I can show you that it makes nice multicolored static. Over here on what I'm going to eventually set up as my PC station, unfortunately, I don't know where I'm going to put them because I have a lot of garbage. But anyway, let's uh, get this plugged in and power up the machine and I'll show you some static. All right, so uh, prepare yourself to be really underwhelmed. <laughs> I'm gonna plug this guy in, this guy, that guy, uh, and you'll see, I mean, it looks cool. Um, I think the timing is slightly off, and I can't figure out why, but uh, I probably will never figure out why. Here she comes. There you go. Um, I might zoom in on it a little bit, because it just looks like static from here, and it is, because it's the random contents of the RAM chip as it fires up. Um, but it's got pretty colors in it, because, you know, it supports those 16 colors, so let's uh, get in here a little tighter. So there you go, very exciting. Um, this monitor does not have great color or anything. It's actually kind of a crap monitor and I need a new one. For some reason, magenta shows up in here a lot, which I'm sure is just some randomness, but, but there you go. That's what the uninitialized contents of memory looks like for a 640, whoa! When you uh, attach a piece of RAM to a monitor running at 640 by 480, that's pretty much it. Well, anyway, that's me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a weird little ramble on uh, unfinished projects and just doing things for fun. Now, I'm not a super uh, type A kind of person, you know? Um, I feel like the kind of person who usually takes on this kind of project might be a little bit more so. 
And I feel like most people wouldn't so much show off projects that uh, are incomplete. But I don't know. I might never finish it, and uh, it might be cool just for other people to see the stuff I've played with. It also goes to show that anybody who wants to do this kind of thing, it really wasn't that hard for me to set up. Any kind of project like this, I'd say just start it. You know, you also shouldn't be scared of not knowing enough because you'll learn by doing it, you know? Um, just get an idea for what you want to put together and start playing with it. I even started doing these kinds of things, particularly with like Arduinos and whatnot, um, back before Arduinos were a thing. I should probably just say microcontrollers. You know, back when everybody was playing with AVRs and PICs uh, in the early 2000s and whatnot. Back in those days, when I was, you know, in my teenage years, uh, I didn't have a job or anything, and I could afford with like a $10 a week allowance for saving for a couple weeks to buy a few parts off DigiKey and whatnot. So, so get started, is what I'm saying. Even if you have to save up a little bit, it's surprisingly cheap to do this kind of stuff. And it can be really rewarding as a learning experience, especially if the learning experience is just finding out that you don't have the time to finish it. Anyway, thanks for sticking around and checking out another one. Uh, I hope this one ends up being a little shorter because I feel like the last couple were, I mean, they're interesting to me, but I don't know how to edit a video, so they may have been a little boring. And I've been officially yelled at by my friend for not having good audio or a decent camera when I should know better about both. So we'll see what happens. I'm already buying so much extra crap for the house and whatnot that, like, spending a couple extra hundred dollars on a DSLR that can do decent video, uh, it's not high on my list. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in, and let's see what I'm going to use for the outro roll this time. Do, 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 it's a computer thing, it's in my room. Do, 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 why am I doing this? Well, I don't know. Do, 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 making a song that really sucks. Do, 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 I made a computer thing that also sucks.